talk about Del Taco off long-standing rivalry. Uh, Del Taco has been around since, I think, 61 or something like that. And Taco Bell, uh, the guys at uh, Del Taco actually used to work for Glenn Bell uh, back at the store in Redlands when it was Bell's Burgers before he decided to go and do that. And then it became Pup and Taco. With it. Anyways, there was a whole thing uh, then with some crazy stuff. Uh, but these guys worked there back in the day and they learned a few things and then they improved on a few things and i'm going to show you exactly how their meat is made i mean seriously i have a couple of the tacos here and i've been sampling this if you blindfolded me right now i couldn't tell you which one was which that is a perfect recipe and follow it and you have the del taco meat now the beans everybody knows del taco's got the best beans come on they just do uh, they're lumpier, they're more authentic, they're more homestyle beans. This is what your abuela would make. So we are going to make those just like that. Uh, sorry, Taco Bell. If you want to learn how to make better beans, then you better watch this video with everybody else. So uh, let's get started. So for the first part of this video, we're going to be working on making the Del Taco seasoned ground beef. Uh, what do you need to do that? I have everything sitting here in front of me, more or less. Uh, let's go over it real quick. Uh, we have a pound of ground beef. Uh, you want this about as lean as you can get it, really. Uh, 80, 20, 90, 10, somewhere in that range. Uh, 93 to 7% fat. Works perfect. Don't go any uh, fattier than uh, 80, 20 for sure. Uh, but basically, uh, just regular ground beef. There you go. Uh, we have a blend of uh, seasonings and spices. Some salt and a little bit of sugar which is really weird uh, I think I have the list here of all of these things I'm not going to remember that off the top of my head right now it's written down somewhere I promise um, I, I wouldn't forget something like that what else do we have we have some dried minced onions right here these are kind of important to this because uh, the, their meat has this in it uh, Taco Bell does not so uh, that is interesting here we go there's that all right what else do we have we have thickeners here we have a tablespoon each of oat flour, corn flour, masa harina basically, and wheat flour. A uh, tablespoon each of those. Those are our thickeners. That's going to thicken this up and make this lovely. Um, and uh, there you go. Now for the weird stuff. Okay. Um, if you watch the Taco Bell meat video, it's pretty straightforward and I used a couple of things in place of a few things and uh, skipped a couple of things. Uh, like in with the jack-of-the-box tacos that I did there's an ingredient to that that I did not use uh, But I now have and we're going to play with it. This is my first time using this. I'm so excited Texturized vegetable protein Yeah, TVP folks. This is basically um, Soy protein concentrate caramel color. There you go. That's what that is. So that is a bunch of Bits of soy, I'll show you in the little camera here. This is what this looks like. They're just these little flakes. These can come in chunks or all kinds of things. Uh, what does this do? This is a meat extender or a meat replacer. If you are a vegan and you wanna learn how to make this and not use any meat whatsoever, you would use a pound of that right there um, and uh, there you go I won't tell you that it tastes exactly the same but uh, I hear it tastes lovely but we're only going to use a quarter cup so this is four ounces basically of this because we're going to add four ounces of water to that it's going to soak up and the whole thing that is going to extend this by about 25 percent there you go uh, that is hell lot cheaper than that uh, allegedly I don't know when you buy it in a bag like this not so much cheaper but it is um texturized soy proteins and there you go uh the other thing that they put in there there's a few other things they put in there they have a lot of really more fresh ingredients there's some uh, yeast and some other things like that that they put in there that add to the texture and extending things and doing stuff and and helping it to keep from doing whatever those things do uh, we're not going to be using any of those because that's pretty advanced molecular gastronomy sort of things. But one thing that uh, they do use and everybody uses is basically citric acid. Citric acid, this is food grade citric acid that is very important because there is like cleaning grade citric acid. 
you don't want to use that. This is food grade, but you can still use this for cleaning. C good, because that is a lot of it. Uh, we would use about a quarter of a teaspoon of this with a pound of meat and all this uh, to get that uh, flavor. This gives it a very, very tart flavor. If you're making sour candies, you know you use this. That gives you the pucker factor. Uh, in place of that, if you don't want to use this, you don't want to have this, don't have it around. By the way, this is supposed to be great for clean toilets. Just a tablespoon in the toilet, let it sit for a little bit, give it a woo, and hey, you didn't come here for the cleaning tips, but you did not not come here for the cleaning tips, <laughs> right? There you go. Uh, but if you don't want to use that, a teaspoon of lime juice. A teaspoon of lime juice is just fine. That'll basically do the same thing. It's the same thing that Taco Bell uses in theirs. Uh, basically, they use the citric acid, but you can replace that with the lime juice if you want to use fresh. Who doesn't want to use fresh? Now that we've got our texturized vegetable protein, I mean, let's keep this organic, right? This is, I don't know that this is organic or not. I don't know how, how you would even notice that, how that's even possible. But uh, what you do to have to use this, you have to hydrate it. If you're not familiar with this, you have to hydrate this stuff. I'm gonna slide that over there. So you take, this is boiling, it was when I started this, what, 23 minutes ago. Um, quarter cup of this and a quarter cup of water. That basically rehydrates this nicely. Give this a stir, basically here. This will soak all this up. Let that sit for a minute or two before you get going. And we're going to add this Okay, seriously, this is the first time I'm... That actually smells good. That's weird. Okay, that actually smells good. See, it's soaked up the water for the most part. It's got a little bit more to go. We're going to let this sit for a couple more minutes uh, as we get everything else going. Uh, but basically, that is what it's going to take. There. Well, that's what it's going to take to make the meat. All I have to do is start cooking it. Now you know everything that's here. Let's cook the meat, and then I've got the one trick to show you on how to get the texture just right. We'll do that in a minute, but uh, let's get over to the stove and uh, get started. So we've got our 12-inch skillet here. We're just going to drop our pound of ground beef in here and kind of break this up. Uh, we're going to start browning this off. With, there's no seasonings going in this so far. Uh, we're just looking to get the texture right. If you want to use one of these meat mashers like this, they work pretty good, but it is a manual method and your arm's going to get tired getting it as fine as we need to. So I like to use the food processor method. We're just going to take and transfer this meat into the food processor as soon as there's no more pink showing. Try not to get the grease in here because that'll just make a mess. Uh, it, <laughs> you don't want that. Just pulse this a couple of times. And uh, four times there basically is it. And this is going to give you the exact texture. This also opens up the meat and makes it absorb everything better. But uh, before we put it back into our pan, we're going to take our tablespoon each of masa harina, oat flour, and AP flour. And we're going to put this in the grease, uh, the, the beef uh, fat here that rendered off. This won't make a real roux. It's more of a dirty roux. Uh, we're going to be adding all of our seasonings to this, so it's going to tighten up like crazy as soon as we do this. Um, if everything I'm putting in is all in the description down below, the recipes down there. Uh, under the title, if you click the more link or show more, it'll show you exactly what we're doing. We're putting a half a cup of water in this now and a big heaping tablespoon of tomato paste and just break this up really good. If you want to use a whisk to do this, it can work pretty well, but this really gets the lumps out. Uh, the best I've found, but we want this to be a nice, you know, basically saucy gravy, more or less, a very spicy, saucy gravy. Uh, and this is way too tight. So we're going to have to add another half a cup of water to this. So that's one cup total. And this is going to work perfectly. Uh, I always add the water slowly in case it doesn't come together. Now we've, the lime juice went in here too. But yeah, you can always add more, but it's really hard to take water out. So don't add it all at once until you see how it looks. But that's what it's supposed to look like. Our textured vegetable protein, or TVP, is going in. And gee, that looks like the ground beef. Uh, because there's our ground beef. And I'm like, yeah, I can't tell the difference. Can you? Nope, that all looks the same. We're just going to mix this really good, incorporate it like crazy. Um, let it simmer on super low for about 10 minutes and the ground beef, basically, that's how you make it. It's, it's done. Mm. 
Now for the beans. We're taking a big can of, or not huge can, but a normal size can, a reasonable size can of uh, pinto beans. We're draining that over a bowl. We're putting about half a tablespoon of oil in our two quart pan here. Uh, we've got a quarter cup of uh, grated onion, just use like a cheese grater and grate up the onion, cook that off for two minutes or so to just get it translucent, a little bit of color on it. Now we're gonna drop the beans in. We're gonna let these cook. Once we put all our seasoning in, all that's on the screen. And again, in the description down below, you'll find all these ingredients, all the recipes down there. Um, and we're gonna cook that off about another two or three minutes and use one of these old waffle style uh, potato, mashed potato maker, basically. And you're just gonna mash this, add a little bit of our juice in here that we came from the can to get the consistency right. But you don't wanna completely smash these unless you like really smooth beans. But Del Taco beans always had a few lumps in there, a few extra like whole beans, so don't go crazy with that. Basically, that is what your beans are supposed to look like, and that's it. So, that was pretty easy. This is seriously it. This meat, I'm telling you. Okay, so I have some Del Taco on hand, and I was sampling between this and the whole thing, and the, it's perfect. I mean, seriously, close my eyes, I wouldn't be able to tell you which one's which. Texture's exactly right, the flavor's exactly right. That that texturized vegetable uh, protein stuff, man. <clears throat> you, I might have to do a whole vegan taco on that alone because I tasted that on its own. Uh, it it's good enough. It's not beef, but it's good enough. Uh, yeah. So yeah, if you want to see vegan tacos using that uh, to figure out how to make amazing stuff. I will do a video on that if you want, if I get enough uh, people in the comments going, please, we want vegan tacos. I'll do it. I'll do it. Don't don't tempt me, because I will. But this is, if you love the Del Taco meat, this is exactly that. And you can make basically uh, most of the stuff on their menu with that. And they actually still have the bun taco on the menu because they have hamburgers and they have buns, so why not? They have the, the stuff, I mean, even if it's not on the menu at your local Del Taco, they can make it for you. So, ask for it and uh, you shall have the bun taco. If you're missing the bell beefer, go over to Del Taco, get the bun taco. All right, the beans, again, they are lumpier, they are amazing, the flavor's a little bit better, they have uh, about one more ingredient in there, and they are super awesome, and I just, personally, I like a little, uh, you know, I want to bite into it and have uh, some bean in there. So uh, this is the way they do it, and that's the way we did it, and that's the way it's done. So thank you for watching. I hope you'll come back as I turn this into more meals, because, I have some ideas. You're going to have to come back. Uh, and uh, if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, YouTube will let you know for free when those videos come out. And hopefully, when they do, I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.